Hi, you four. Welcome back. We are on lesson five today. So we finished our work on the great cape up tree and we're moving on to look at some poetry today. So the poetry that we're going to be looking at is from a book called Wild World by Angela McAllister. So totally different things we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be going back to some skills on summarising um, for a text. So you remember when we were first after reading the gate cable tree, we were looking at summarising it. So we're going to go back and look at that. And we're going to use some of our expanded noun phrases work to identify noun phrases in there as well, but in a totally new text. So it's going to be completely different today, but we've got those skills that we've already had to bring into this piece of work with us. So it's not going to be totally new. So let's check we've got everything we need. So we need a few extra things today. So we're going to need our normal pen or pencil to do our writing. We're going to need a different colour for our editing. We are going to need our English book as usual. But I also want you today to have some plain paper. So just a normal piece of A4 plain paper is fine. If you haven't got any, you can do it on lime paper. We're going to do some drawing today. And some coloured pens or pencils, whatever you've got. Because we're going to be drawing some pictures. So make sure you've got all of those things. Press pause until you've got them. And then we're going to get started. So let's start with our game, shall we? So today's game, you are going to be thinking about antonyms. I wonder if you can remember what I said about antonyms at the end of yesterday's lesson. What is an antonym? Hopefully you would have remembered that it means the opposite. So for instance, we can have stop and start. Start is the total opposite of stop. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to say a word and I want you to write down in your English book, the word that means the opposite of that, okay? So you don't have to write down my word, just the word that means the opposite. Are you ready? Okay, first one. What is the opposite of hot? Let me write it down. The opposite of hot. If you want to press pause to get a little bit more time, you can. Then we're going on to the next one. What is the opposite of wet? Wet. And what is the opposite of clean? What's the opposite of clean? And dark. What's the opposite? What's the antonym for dark? And what is the opposite of old? What is the opposite of safe? What is the opposite of beautiful and of big? And last two, the next one is always. If you always do something, what's the opposite of that? What's the antonym for always? And finally, below. Below, what's the opposite of below? If you missed any, rewind the video a little bit and check them. Okay, make sure you've got them all down. You can press pause for a second and think about those for a little bit if you want to. And then let's have a look at the answers. So we had hot and the antonym for hot is cold. We had wet and the opposite is dry. Clean and the opposite is dirty. Dark and light. Old and young. Safe and dangerous. Beautiful and ugly big and small, or you could have a synonym like little. So for some of these, you might not have exactly the same word as me, okay? You might have a synonym for that word instead. So you might have hot and freezing, that would be okay. Um, and then we've got always and never and below and above. Okay, I wonder how did you do with those? So they're called antonyms, opposites, okay? So they're um, in the last two lessons, we were doing synonyms, which meant the same. This time we're doing antonyms, which is the opposite. And we're using those today because there are some opposites explored in the poetry that we're going to look at today. So let's have a look at this poetry, shall we? Now we've got our brains into gear and we've got our thinking hats on. So this is the author of um, Wild Worlds and her name is Angela McAllister. And she's written lots and lots of books, more than 80 books. She has written picture books, she has written poetry books, she's written some funny books, she has written some books for teenagers, and she's written so many books that some of them have been changed into other languages. So she had them in 20 different languages, and she's won lots of awards. So she's a really, really high quality author. 
So you might, after having read this poem, want to go out and find some more of her books. So her name's Angela McAllister. And in this particular book, in Wild Worlds, she has written poems about 13 different habitats. So she starts with um, the rainforest and then she explores things like the polar regions, the Arctic. She looks at savannas. She looks at deep dark under the sea. All sorts of fascinating and beautiful habitats. So each page is a beautiful picture with her poem in the centre. And you can see at the bottom of the page there, there are some different people's opinions of the book Wild World. You can see that people think it's pretty impressive. So that's why we're going to have a look at it. And because one of her first poems that she's written is called The Rainforest. So I thought it would be a brilliant poem to have a look at. So what we're going to do now is I thought rather than me read you the poem, that I might get her to read the poem for you. So I'm going to show you the poem first so you can have a sense of what it looks like. So here it is. Okay, just have a little scan down there and have a look first so you've got a sense of what the poem is about. If you want to press pause and read the whole poem, you can, and then we'll get her to read it for you. So let me get her up on the screen for you. So I thought it's rather nice, isn't it? It's a bit like having a poet come to visit your classroom. We're going to get her to read you the actual poem itself. So let's have a look. Here she is. So her name's Angela McAllister, and this is her reading of the Rainforest Poem. So I'd like to read to you um, the very first spread in the book here, which is about the rainforest. You see it's got a beautiful picture, can't Rainforest. It? Hot, wet rainforest spreads a green roof high above the earth, loud with a swing, swoop and song of life. Bright birds flash, apes chatter, plump fruit ripens to slowly tempt the sloth. But what is hidden below that canopy where the sun cannot pass? A shady world of strangle vines scrambling for a shaft of light, lush leaves searching for a glimmer in the gloom, haunt of mighty gorilla and poisonous frog and slithering python. A secret world where fungi glow upon tree roots. Termites swarm among dead things on the dark forest floor, never knowing that their tiny work feeds giants. Okay, so that was our author, our poet, Angela McAllister, sharing her poem with you. So that was rather nice. Wasn't it? I thought, oh, I've got one. I found that on Authorfy. Authorfy is a fantastic website. Um, showed a master, her masterclass. I thought, oh, we've got to use that so that we can actually hear the author reading her own poem. So it sounds exactly as she imagined that she wanted it to sound. So we're going to have a look at that poem today. And we're going to explore the words in the poem. And we're going to think about exactly what the poem is about. So here it is again. Hot, wet rainforest spreads a green roof high above the earth. So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the screen and I want you to draw a picture. Of, so we had a little glimpse, didn't we, of the picture that went round her poem as she was reading it to us, but we didn't have a proper look. So I want you to imagine now that you're trying to design the illustration that goes round the outside of her poem. And it's up to you. You can do it all absolutely beautifully in full colour if you want to or you can do a very kind of rough drawing, but the important bit is I want you to label it. So when you see things like apes chatter, I want you to kind of on your picture, draw a picture of the ape, and next to it you can write apes chatter. So you're gonna label your picture with little excerpts from the poem. And the idea of this is that you can really have a good look at all the different parts of the poem, and you can really think about what's in that poem before we have a go at summarising it, okay? I thought it'd be nice to do something a little bit more creative today. So I need you to pause and you're going to go away and you're going to draw this beautiful picture, okay? If you really aren't very keen on drawing, you can just draw very rough shapes that enable them. But I want you to really think about what that picture would have looked like, okay? So I want you to really think about labelling each part so that you know that you've included all the things in the poem. Okay, off you go. Press pause. 
Okay, so hopefully you've done a beautiful picture. Let's have a look and see. Now yours is not going to be exactly the same as the picture that she has produced. But as long as you've made sure you've included lots of different things. So let's have a look at the actual picture. Here it is. So you can see there's the ape that's chattering. You can see the fungi glowing upon the tree roots down the bottom here, can't you? You can see the vines and all of those things are included in that picture. So let's make sure, so double check, go through that poem again and make sure you've included all those different things. And obviously we've got to have lots of green in there for the rainforest because we've got all those beautiful green plants in that rainforest. So can we now move from a picture to a summary? So before you will remember, we were trying to summarize the uh, story of the great K-pop tree and we used three questions to help us. I wonder if you can remember what those three questions were. Can you remember what they were? Here you go, look. Splash is reminding you. It says, Mrs. Aston, can we use who, what and why again? So you can. Sometimes with poetry, you can use who, what, and why. But sometimes you can only use one or two of those words to help you summarise. Okay, so in, for example, in here, there's not really a who, there's not a main character running all the way through. So I think we need to focus really, when we're summarising, on what and why today. So I want you to think about that poem and think, what is it about? And why has the poet decided to choose that as a topic for her poem? Okay, and when I look at this poem, I kind of see it in two sections. And I think when she was reading it to us, she kind of saw it in two sections as well. So you've got the first section, which I think starts up here with hot, wet rainforest and finishes at this question here. But what is hidden below that canopy? So that first section is on one aspect of the rainforest, isn't it? This section here. And then there's a contrast, there's a real difference. And that's why we did antonyms at the beginning, because we start with hot, wet rainforest up here and all the bright colours. And then down here, we've got a shady world. And then the poem continues. So I want you to see if you can summarise what this poem is about in less than, I think, 30 words. Okay, so I want a summary. What is this poem about? If somebody said to you, Oh, you've just read a poem, what's it about? If you were gonna go and tell your mum what the poem, or your dad or your gran or somebody on FaceTime later, what you've been doing in school today, you say, oh, I've been doing this poem about the ring for us. And they say, oh, was it about, what was it about? I want a really short sentence, thinking about who, what and why for that poem. What is it about in less than 30 words? So press pause, off you go. Can you get a summary for this poem for me? Right, hopefully you're back because you've managed a summary. So this is my summary for the poem. So I said, this poem compares the bright, colourful world in the canopy of the rainforest with the darker, more frightening world on the forest floor below. So that's why I said, think about it in two sections. So this section is all bright and colourful and noisy and all exciting, isn't it? And then the other part, the bit on the ground, is dark. She talks about a shady world, doesn't she? So it makes it sound more frightening. And then she's got words like strangle vines, which sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? And mighty gorilla and poisonous frog. And she's picked out all of the kind of more scary aspects of the rainforest in that section, hasn't she? So she's got this beautiful, exciting place that is the canopy above. And then this really scary place that is the world up on the floor of the rainforest. So hopefully in your um, summary, you've managed to pick out those two things. So you might not have written it in exactly the same words as me, but have you managed to say it is about a rainforest? The first section is like this and the second section is like this. So you, hopefully you picked out that it was bright and noisy in the canopy and that actually the second part of the poem was a little bit more frightening and scary. So that's our summary for today. If you want to, if you're not happy with the summary that you've written, you can now go back and try and reword your summary a little bit using your other colour pen and see if you can put some more in. Or if you've just said this is a poem about a rainforest, you might want to add a little bit more detail about and it compares the, the high life and the bright life of the rainforest canopy to the darker, more frightening world below. So we're trying to get that comparison in there so that 
her main point really was to get a vivid picture in our minds, wasn't it, of what the rainforest was like. That that was the point of her poem. Right, now we're gonna go back and have a think about some noun phrases, okay? So this is our poem, okay? And what I would like you to do is to pass, cast your mind back to all that work we've been doing on noun phrases. And I want you to see how many noun phrases you can find in our poem for today, okay? So you're gonna make a big long list in your book of all the noun phrases. So remember, they're phrases, they're not sentences, so they're not gonna have a verb in them. And then noun phrases. And the noun phrases that we looked at either had a determiner and a noun, or a determiner, an adjective and a noun, or maybe two adjectives and a noun, and sometimes an extra prepositional phrase on the end. And maybe if you find a prepositional phrase, you could write that next week. You just put PP for prepositional phrase. Okay, so we need to have a go now and see how many noun phrases you can find. Press pause and off you go. Right, have you managed it? I wonder how many noun phrases you found. There are lots in this poem, which is why I thought, again, why I chose this poem, because it had lots of noun phrases in. So let's have a look at those noun phrases now. Here they all are in green. So it starts with a noun phrase. It starts with adjective, comma, adjective, noun. Hot, wet, rainforest. So that's the start of our first section of our poem. You'll notice if we whiz down to the start of the, what I see is the second section of the poem, we've also got just a little noun phrase on its own. A, which is a determinant, shady adjective, world noun. So we've got these little nice, sim nice simple um, noun phrase here and an expanded noun phrase with that extra adjective up here. Then we've got a green roof and then we have got high above the earth. And high above the earth, is describing the top of the rainforest, but it's also a prepositional phrase. So hopefully you spotted that above the earth as a prepositional phrase. Then we've got swing, swoop, and song of life, bright birds, apes, plump fruit. We've got the sloth, that canopy, the sun, strangle vines, a shaft of light, lush leaves, a glimmer in the gloom and again in the gloom here so it was a glimmer was our little noun phrase simple noun phrase but it was extended with a pre prepositional phrase again in the gloom so hopefully you spotted that mighty gorilla poisonous frog slithering python a secret world again another that's almost like another section of the poem there isn't it that second section is almost divided up into two because we've got another line that's just a noun phrase where fungi glow upon the tree roots. We've got the tree roots. Oh, we should have fungi as well. I've missed that one out. Termites, dead things. And then we have on the dark forest floor, which is another one of our prepositional pre phrases. And then we've got tiny work and giants. I hope you spotted all of those. So that's our poem. So we've already finished our first lesson on the poem. That was really good. So we've covered looking at an illustration that goes with the poem. We have summarized our poem and now we've used our knowledge of noun phrases to search for those noun phrases. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Well tomorrow we're going to be looking a little bit more detail about the structure of the poem because I'm going to get you to write your own rainforest poem tomorrow using the structure of that poem. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've got. So if you've got some time overnight, do a bit more research on rainforests, find out all about the different animals in the rainforest, all about the different plants, so that you've got lots to write about tomorrow. And we're going to be using those expanded noun phrases again in our poetry tomorrow. So well done. Another lesson finished. I will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Let me stop sharing and I can finish the video and say goodbye. See you tomorrow.